I was going to say, uh, uh, you know, as we got to know the MKS company and the integrity business uh, in the automotive industry, one of the things that's really driving business is uh, a new set of supply chain standards. Because if you think about it, you know, in an automobile, and this is Andre's business, there's so much software. There's software controlling the engine. There's uh, software making sure your fingers don't get pinched in the window and closing the door. There's the infotainment and navigation system. There's all these uh, safety systems, traction control, anti-lock brakes, uh, airbags. You know, every one of these things is a computer running software. And so you have a big OEM trying to produce a high quality product, but it's got these hundred million lines of source code, most of which come from suppliers. Yeah. The OEMs don't actually write the majority of that software. They get it from suppliers who get some from their suppliers and so on and so on. And so you get this whole supply chain adding nuggets of software and then an OEM who has to actually make sure all that stuff works together. Because if one little piece of it doesn't work together, you get a recall. And you can lose a tremendous amount of money because a first, second, or third tier supplier has a bug in a piece of software. So they've developed a series of supply chain standards basically to ensure compliance with requirements at every level and then change management at every level to make sure that we don't have a third tier supplier who comes in over lunch, writes a couple lines of code, and we have to recall a million vehicles next year. It's, an, it's a tremendous example of supply chain complexity driving what will now be PTC's business around collaboration within that value chain. I can only underline that, but there, there's two, two dimensions of standards you have. One is like the functional safety management ISO, I don't even know the number, 10, 26, 26, 26, 26 right. You know, standards like that, which somehow make sure that your product at the end of the day is integer, and that's for functional safety critical products. If you look on the supply chain, as, as he called it, you know, you said Apple has 200 suppliers. I say, so what? Okay, if you're an OEM, if you're an OEM, or you know that that's what you would dream of, or Continental would dream of, only have to to have two, two, 200 suppliers. But at the end of the day, that's exactly exactly the trick. You know, for the automotive industry, for decades, is in a tiered environment. If you look from a Continental perspective, we supply all OEMs globally. I don't know an exception. There might be the one or the other, but we, we supply all of them. As our suppliers supply us and the Delphi's and the Vistians and the Bosch's and so on. You know, and, and if you go and you take this ecosystem of one OEM, I think still that this is not going far enough. Since you put constraints on that, that what you call the supply chain. You know, actually, what we, in the actual world we are living, that's a supply network. And what we are lacking is really the, the process and the communication standards to make that networks working most efficient. It's always kind of a little bit on the competitive edge where you think, okay, the way I'm doing stuff, it's maybe my intellectual property. I don't want to, to, to standardize that. But you have to have that network unconstrained as much as you can. You need to have those functional safety standards to make sure your airbag doesn't go off you know, just since you're breaking or whatever, so you have to make that sure, but also you need all those communication standards in order to have an efficient and deep integration with the, with the suppliers. And you know, a tier one supplier is right in between. We're in a sandwich position, if you like. You know, our OEMs kind of intrigue to us processes and tools we are supposed to use in order to, I would say, sub-optimize that supply chain. And if we, if we go the same way, we will have sub-optimized ecosystems. You can bring the two level where you can implement standards which reduce the frictions you have into that, and you really look on the ecosystems based on your product. That's actually my take on it.